I've heard of celebrities being interested in this thing. I've heard Michael Jackson was interested in this thing, and um, it's crazy. And there's a company called Clonade, right. apparently, who's, I don't know if you want to get to that now. Yeah, I mean... Um, that's where Kid Boo mentioned Clonade, and I was looking at WikiLeaks, and I found some WikiLeaks documents on Clonade, and um, I came through that for, by searching extraterrestrials on WikiLeaks. Oh, shit. Because, <laughs> because there's this group called the Raelians. Right. Okay? And it was, I don't know much about them, but uh, apparently there was a gentleman who had contact with an extraterrestrial named Rail or something, yep. and apparently that they had a hand in creating human life, and um, they were big into cloning themselves to extend life and, you know, expand life to 1,000, 2,000 years. Apparently you could do this with cloning too. Yeah. And this rail guy st started the company called CloneAid. And according to the WikiLeaks documents, we can show the document here, the Canadian government was, this company is based in Canada, the Canadian government was very interested in this Raelian movement. Right. So because they were, they had claimed to have cloned a human being. And let me, let me just get it to one little tidbit before you continue, because yeah. this is going to add to that interesting factor. The Raelians, uh, this is just a simple Google search, right, without yeah. uh, going too deep into it. But um, headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, the founder that you're talking about is Claude Vor, Vorilon. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to yeah, pronounce, pronounce that exactly. Either, but yeah. uh, Raelianism is, Raelianism, I should say, is a UFO religion, as they call it, that was founded in 1974 by Claude Vorilion, or whatever his name is there, um, now known as Rael. So he changed his name to Rael. Mm, okay. uh, the Raelian movement teaches that life on Earth was scientifically created by a species of humanoid extraterrestrials, which they call the Elohim, mm. which at its core, Raelianism is essentially saying that you can create genetically uh, like. these physical bodies right. like this, right? Yeah. So yeah, okay. so that's not that far-fetched to say then that why they're so interested in these people when their whole belief system stems around the fact that human beings are created in a laboratory, Right. if you want to look at it that exactly. way. Exactly, yeah. And why was the Canadian government so interested in mm -hmm. this group? Like they were, uh, yeah. you know, that's what I want to know, yeah, especially when the government has a ban on cloning and this kind of thing, this Australian group claiming to clone human beings and claiming they've, claiming they've been successful. All of a sudden, you get government attention. Um, here's a. I think we should play this. These couple clips by um, um, Bush and Clinton talking about it, just to show people that you know it was on the radar. Yep. Our administration believes that there are loopholes that could allow the cloning of human beings if such if the technology were developed. Therefore, today I am issuing a directive that bans the use of any federal funds for any cloning of human beings. Effective immediately, no federal agency may support, fund, or undertake such activity. Of course, a great deal of research and activity in this area is supported by private funds. That is why I am urging the entire scientific and medical community, every foundation, every university, every industry that supports work in this area, to heed the federal government's example. I'm asking for a voluntary moratorium on the cloning of human beings, until our Bioethics Advisory Commission and our entire nation have had a real chance to understand and debate the profound ethical implications of the latest advances. As we gain a fuller understanding of this technology, we must proceed not, with caution, not just with caution, but also with a conscience. By insisting that not a single taxpayer dollar supports human cloning, and by urging a moratorium on all private research in this area, we can ensure that as we move forward on this issue, we weigh the concerns of faith and family and philosophy and values, not merely of science alone. Thank you very much. A hopeful society has institutions of science and medicine that do not cut ethical corners and that recognize the matchless value of every life. Tonight, I ask you to pass legislation to prohibit the most egregious abuses of medical research, human cloning in all its forms creating or implanting embryos for experiments, creating human-animal hybrids, and buying, selling, or patenting human embryos. Human life is a gift from our Creator, and that gift should never be discarded, devalued, or put up for sale. And, um, yeah, so there you go. And um, about Clonade, which is created by the Raelian movement, one of the spokesperson persons is named um, Dr. Bridget 
I can't pronounce it either, Boslier, Bos Boslier, Dr. Bridget Boslier. She was born in 1956. She's got two PhDs in chemistry, one from the University of Dijon in France and one from the University of Houston. Um, she's one of the head scientists at CloneAid, and in 2002, she gave a press conference that gained a lot of media attention. Um, like this was all over mainstream media, claiming that they cloned the first human baby. Mm -hmm. So let's play this clip here. I'm very, very pleased to announce that the ba first baby clone uh, is born. She was born yesterday at 11:55 uh, a.m. in the country where she was born. So this will not give you <laughs> more details about the location. She. She's fine. We call her Eve between us. You knew that, of course. Some suggested it, and I thought it was a good idea, actually. You won't have the right name. And, you know, for a long time, I thought that the, um, this press conference will be with the baby, the parents, the scientists, everybody surrounding me, and uh, having pleasure announcing it. I'm alone. And there is a reason to that, is that um, it hasn't been easy to face the world with this announcement. And we've, uh, we have been discussing with the parents the last three months how we would handle today. And uh, they decided not to show up yet. They will. I hope they will. And I wish them well. We started really to work with human eggs in January of this year. So it took us three months to finalize, and this is very short, and that's why I said, is it luck or is it hard work? I do believe it's hard work. And, but we had, uh, our really, we had really good success very quickly and refined the technique for human eggs mm -hmm. until spring, where we started to have implantation. We had. 10 implantations, and five of them during the first three weeks uh, were terminated spontaneously. Five others were successful and are still successful. The first one so was um, uh, born yesterday. The next one is due in Europe next week. That's pretty, pretty intense. Like, I mean, it's yeah. almost surreal listening to that clip. Yeah, and that's in 2002. So yeah. that's like almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got like 17. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's, in the, in the interesting part of this, so a little bit more background on, on Bridget Boisselier, I think that's how you pronounce her name there, okay. um, also known as Bridget Rohr, is a French chemist and Raelian religious leader best known for her claim to have overseen the creation of the first human clone. A native of Champagne, uh, Adren, she studied chemistry in France and the United States, earning two PhDs. So, I mean, this individual, from a credibility standpoint, right? So she's making giant claims, mm -hmm. right? From a credibility standpoint, it's like, well, I mean, she's a PhD. She's she's you know obviously done a lot of studying. She has the background to be able to approach this subject, right? Then you start asking the questions. Okay, great, but she's also part of a religious. Uh, I guess, belief system, if you mm -hmm. want to look at it that way. I mean, that's how the Raelians are defined. They may not consider themselves a religion, yeah. right? But this is how it's defined. Well, maybe they're trying to push and, uh, their agenda, and so coming up with potentially a hoax like this, this is the thought, right, mm -hmm. could, be, could be something that, that they're interested in doing. It could be part mm -hmm. of the motivation. But here's the thing that I find interesting before we sort of continue with this conversation in, in another direction here, is the idea that... When you start to consider, like they were talking about working with the eggs, right, and using the eggs to try and create clones and do all this sort of stuff. Yeah. When you consider that this organization, the Raelians, claims to have had contact with extraterrestrial beings, and those extraterrestrial beings are, uh, you know, in some way, shape, or form involved in the creation of humanity, which really is not, when you've been in the space a lot, that is not a far-fetched far idea at, at all. all. Yeah. And when you start looking at the amount of cases where you have abductees talking about how they um, were either male 
and were brought up to breed with females or they were yeah. females brought up to breed or their eggs were taken or sometimes um, a seed was implanted within them, they yeah. were pregnant, then they got abducted again and the baby was taken away. Yeah. There's so many of those cases. Oh, the, yeah, it's um, unbelievable how many of those cases and how consistent they are. And the, they sh right. how many, there are thousands of people who have claimed to have been abducted. And this is just one part of the contact experience abductions and claim to have that, had that experience yeah. and share the same stories. Right. Thousands, and none of them know each other. So it's consistency is crazy. Yeah. And so it, it, again, just to go to the idea of like, okay, well, you know, are these people telling the truth about, you know, allegedly having cloned? I mean, you got to think if this is an organization that, I mean, the Raelians, it's not like the Catholic Church. It's not like Scientology where it, they are so obviously out in, out there that you could say, well, they probably have tons and tons and tons and tons of money behind them because mm -hmm. of how much they're out there. Well, yeah. they may have money behind them, but it's probably not to the scale of any of these very, no, very No, from what I've looked religions. into, they've struggled, but they struggled big time with funding. And they right. struggled a lot to even con complete these clones. They were able to because of funding right. from obviously anonymous donors. But yeah, they struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's interesting about this is it's like, so here you have... Right. You, you look at the mainstream, you look at what the mainstream admits and talks about, then you look at the black budget and what they don't talk about. Then you look kind of down the middle and you mm -hmm. say, well, you know, here's, uh, uh, you know, depending on how you look at it, we, we, maybe we could do some more research into the actual dollar amounts. But you look at it and you say, well, a relatively underfunded organization was able to clone, allegedly, m it sounds like multiple yeah. human beings. Yeah. And they're not the only one. I mean, there's been many, for example, um, there's a doctor by the name of Panayitis Zevos, if I'm pronouncing that right, P-A-N-A-Y-I-O-T-I-S. He claimed to have cloned 14 human embryos so far and implanted them in 11, planted 11 of them into the wombs of four women. Um, it's just to give listeners an idea that, you know, there's multiple people attempting to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's not far fetched at all. And um, according to WikiLeaks, um, you know, um, the goal of, Clone aid is to um, basically make human beings immortal and enable them to create another civilization on another planet. In the meantime, um, they want to build an embassy to welcome the Elohim, this extraterrestrial yeah. group, who they believe is going to come back in 2035. And the group have been criticized for advocating the use of genetics for um, eugenic attempts to at improving the human race. Right. But like like you said, it's not if you've been in the lore of extraterrestrials. The idea that we were kind of a number of different extraterrestrial groups had a hand in human beings' creation is not far-fetched at all. You hear it in stories like this. You hear it in ancient scriptures and the Vedic texts. You know the stories in the Bible about the Nephilim. You know, yeah. the, um, mating with gods. Um, ancient Greece. You hear it in modern-day abduction stories, crossbreeding. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. You and know, it, this might just be one group. Yeah. You know, but it's everywhere. And I think, that, I think I said this in a previous episode, but it's so fitting to, to kind of say it here again. And it's the idea of like these views, what we're talking about, the idea of potentially humanity being genetically created and so forth, are they, they are made to seem like they're alternative views and they're fringy views, yeah. and however you want to look at it. The reality of the situation is like the only reason something is fringe or alternative or weird is because culturally... They've been made to be that way based on what has been found as the conjecture. Yeah. What we understand as the conjecture in both the scientific explanation of humanity, but also the religious explanation of humanity, which arguably both fall under the same religious standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Um, those two explanations, I, you know, single-celled organism after the Big Bang eventually evolves uh, into human beings that we see today, that explanation for evolution has holes in it that are oh. unbelievably immense. In fact, I've heard from a number of archaeological scientists and evolutionary scientists in general that they know the theory of evolution is false. Like it has been yeah. long debunked scientifically by peer-reviewed journalists. The challenge is, is that trying to change that perspective and trying to change all of the books that are out there is an impossible task and thus it just be stays as a religious belief further right. to that we have the 
what came through religious uh, Catholicism, for example, which uh, or Christianity. Let's stick to that, um, which really came around and, and was used as a as a way to go and infect culture all over the place. Hey, we'll come in, we'll make a deal with you on your land, providing that you know you teach Christianity, right? right. So when you look at those, became the norms, yeah. but they were really just religious beliefs. Yeah, and and so this seems crazy, mm -hmm. but is it? 